Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with WDSC, WRPT in Duluth, Minnesota. Today we are chatting with Patra Sebastiadis, Executive Director of the Duluth Library Foundation, who has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. And thank you, Patra, for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. So libraries really loom so large in my own heart. It was mm -hmm. how I learned to read, and I had a lot of difficulty learning to read okay. uh, when I was a child. Talk about the work of the Duluth Library and its foundation. So some people ask me, are libraries even relevant anymore? And I have to say, it's usually people who haven't been in the library for some time and haven't seen libraries changing. What we know is that libraries are um, centers of community, they're centers of lifelong learning, and they're centers where everyone is welcome. And so opportunities for anyone to walk in the door and learn anything, such as you learning to read, uh, such as people applying for work or learning new opportunities. They're still the heart of the community. They're still a place where everyone is welcomed. And they're still places of opportunity um, to make new things possible. What we, what we don't realize, what we don't really, it, it's not that we don't realize it as much as we don't really think about it, is that libraries have three different natures. They have traditionally been a place, a repository for books, yes. a place where books or scrolls before that mm -hmm. were kept so that if you needed to access it, you actually had to go to that physical location. Yes. But there are other natures that are intrinsic to library as well. It's the community building and the communication, mm -hmm. and it's the access to those libraries that's so important. A library is a place where regardless of means, you can gain access to the world, can't you? Absolutely, absolutely. And in fact, for many people, you mentioned technology in there. For many people, the library is the first place where they'll encounter new technology. Libraries evolve as technology evolves. And so for many people, that's where they go for a computer or an e-reader or any number of technologies. If you go to the computer center at our library, you'll see the 22 stations are almost always full. Uh, so yes, libraries are precisely that, places where anyone can thrive, and, uh, and we're pleased to be able to fund that and make those things possible. What's also changed is the role of the librarian. What kind of knowledge are you going to curate? What kind of, how, what kind of a guide are you going to provide? And yes. how do you gain access? How do you give access to people in a way that allows new knowledge to flow through that library, but also in a contextualized way? What we find is that information, the power of information and managing information is at the heart of the library still. <clears throat> so while some may say the internet has all information out there, mm -hmm. why do you even need a library with what it may retain? What we know is that librarians can determine what is good information, right. not such good information. And so they're still managing information. We receive between one and three letters at the library for the reference department, and I'm sure dozens more on phone and email, because people know that the library is still a source that can be trusted in terms of managing information, finding information, or even finding a book that's not available in our city or in our state, and may even be out of the country, that it can be obtained through the library. A library is a neutral ground, isn't it? It yes. isn't really about whether it's, it's uh, Fox or CNN or Google or Facebook or, um, or uh, some organization with an agenda. The agenda of a library is to provide access and to provide, allow people to guide themselves. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And it's wonderful because it's a model of service to other. So the librarians are there not to tell you what you should believe or whom you should listen to in that sense or that agenda, but rather how can we help you find the information that you're or looking for. Or tilt what you have access to, what exactly. you actually see. Talk a little bit about the library sure. on the one hand and, and the foundation's role in supporting its function. Well, so uh, another question I'm often asked is why is it that a public library needs private funding? Aren't we paying for that with our taxes? And of course, that's right, we are. Um, and so the city of Duluth has money in its budget for the library and it pays for the staff and the buildings. It even has a line item for materials, books, subscriptions, other things that the, the community needs. Um, but in that budget, there's no money for programs. So that every library program for everyone from tiny children 
to school-aged children, teens, adults, and seniors, that's all paid for by grants and donations. So, and in addition, we know that the demand for library services and materials exceeds the library budget. So the Library Foundation exists to make it possible to bridge the gap between what the library budget can do and what the community is actually demanding. And that's private funding. It's people who love the library who want to make it fruitful for the community. Talk about some of those programs. Oh, everything from um, story time. We made it possible for the two branches to have their own story time essentials kits, puppets, uh, art materials, and other things so that they could set up their own programs, not having to rely on the main library. Um, School-aged children, teeny weeny robots. We can teach children how to code with robots. That was funded also at the Library Foundation. One of my favorites is the Teen Anime and Manga Club, where teenagers come to the library and they talk about everything from Japanese animation to graphic novels. And then they eat and laugh and play games and they build community. They put down their screens and they're talking with each other and with librarians. And then they come to the library even when the programs aren't going. So they're falling in love with the library. Um, and then we also have programs for adults, everything from making non-toxic materials to clean your homes to summer programs, live concerts, outdoor at the library. So things that build community, things that build learning. Could you talk about how the uh, library continues to serve its traditional base of, of readers who love physical books? Absolutely, I'm one of those as well. I, I will read on a screen if I have to, but I just find the comfort of a book, the smell of the pages, the feel it in my hands mm -hmm. so reassuring. So it does continue to have such books. It also offers e-books and e-readers for those who want to carry less or to have something that can increase the point size of letters. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are full of books and uh, constantly updating what those books are, bringing in not only bestsellers, but things that the community has asked for. So we continue with books, uh, but we continue with all sorts of information, to your point. It really is Whatever the information is, the library will manage it, be that papyrus scrolls in the past or digital today. How do you provide help to people of limited means to ensure that the, uh, the playing field is somewhat more level when it comes to accessing knowledge through your programs and accessing your programs themselves? Are your programs fee-for-service programs? Do, you, do people have to pay um, a bit to, to participate? Um, how do materials work? If you have art materials, how does that work? Right, great questions. In fact, everything the library offers is free, everything. That's its ethos, and that's, that's why you need additional funding. So anyone can come and participate. Sometimes you only have certain materials, only room enough for 24 people, so then people have to pre-register, but there's no fee for that. So you show up and you're provided with whatever you need. Um, it's open to everybody. We have three library locations in mm -hmm. Duluth. And so each of the two branches has different needs than the downtown. And so the, the programming focuses on the needs of that community and the interests of that community as well. Uh, that said, everyone can go to any of the different programs. Um, access is for everyone. Um, the doors are effectively open all the time at the library. That's the feeling of the place. And one of the things that the library recently instituted was a fine-free policy, because what we saw was that people in zip codes of lesser um, resources often were the ones with the biggest fines. And that meant that shame and, uh, and a sense of uh, the idea I can't go back to the library was keeping people away. And what we've seen in the last four months is it's been changing as a result of the fine free policy. Not only have people been returning things that they've been holding on to, but people have started using the library more. And that's a trend across the nation. So I'm, I'm happy to say that we're part of that. Yeah. What does the future hold for the libraries in Duluth? There, there, there are a few things that the Library Foundation has been told that the library is looking to accomplish. And these are things that are leading out uh, in time. One of them is Every Child Ready Duluth. It's a program that has just started. It's to help children be ready for school. And it's something that we're incredibly excited about helping because it's a long-standing problem in Duluth. So Duluth's um, level of poverty is twice the national average. We're at about 20%. So that's a context. Uh, one of the other challenges we have is that when children are 
ready to go to kindergarten, they're tested. And we've found, we found that only 41.8% of them are considered school ready. And so when they get into the school classroom, they're not thriving. And, uh, and the reason that's a problem is because if one out of every two children going into kindergarten isn't doing well, what they're seeing is they're seeing other children raising their hands, knowing to use the cubby and where to hang up their coats. They know how to engage in learning information. They're excited about what it is that they're learning. Those other children watching can say, well, they must be smart. I must be dumb. They must belong at school. I don't belong at school. I don't feel good being here. And the reason we know that matters is because what we see is if children enter kindergarten and they're school ready, the statistics on their lives are dramatically better. Uh, they'll learn how to read on time, more likely. They're more likely to graduate from high school. Uh, as adults, they're more likely to have um, jobs with more income, more likely to be civically engaged, such as voting. Their health outcomes and their children's health outcomes are more likely to be better. So we see that if at this crucial moment they are engaged, children are engaged and ready to enter school, their life outcome is better. And we know that the odds are stacked against children who are not. So why am I telling you all of this? Because the library has recently uh, launched a new endeavor called Every Child Ready Duluth. It's based on the American Library Association's program, Every Child Ready to Read which has many successes. And the idea is if you can engage the parents and caregivers of a child, that child is more likely to be ready. And if you let those parents know that they're their children's best and first teacher and give them the simple tools to help their children, their children are more likely to thrive. And in Duluth, um, that's a challenge that the library is willing to take on. And it's one that was identified the community in the community some years ago. Yeah. The return is just amazing because yes. these are the transformational actions yes. that we can all take. They seem small at the time, yes. but those ripples spread out and they impact people across the community. Patros Avasiatis, thank you so much for sharing the work of the Duluth Library, the Duluth Library Foundation, and thank you so much for your insights. You're welcome. It was a real pleasure. Thank you so much, Mark.